But honestly, like if you're doing it for real, if you if you're doing whatever you do for real, it's it's uh, you take it to heart. Right, right. And you you make it real. So so being an actor, it's actually a very difficult job to do. To cap it off, um, to cap off this very serious part of, part of this sorry, drunken discussion right. we're having, um, you've done powder. We're just talking about this. this well, there's, very there's, there's, things in, there's things in powder that Sean, I'm sure, tapped into it and Absolutely. made it so good because yes, he's right. so good in that. Right, right. You can't you can't just say I want to be an actor and like phone that shit in and make it that good. It's too late. There, there, it, there, there's too much yeah. pathos. Um, but how how do you reckon? How, 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 how do I put this? Um, so, so you, so you're calling your dad, you know, to do this scene. How do you reckon? Um, how do I put this? Uh, you know, there's a whole life imitates art, art, art imitates life thing. Where do you compartmentalize the fact that you're calling your dad to access this part of you to do this role? Well, I mean, everyone's life is individual. Their paths they've taken life, and whatever jobs they're doing is their own path. They've chosen to do whatever, and it's all just a job. It's like you're making fucking faces for chicken and money. That's basically what's going on. But, but it, it actually takes a lot of balls to do what we do, and like you know, like you can, you can, and same thing with being a musician or a poet or, or whatever. But if you do something as a profession where you put yourself out for people to criticize. Um, there's a certain amount of sacrifice that you put out because you're doing it for real. And whatever selfish reasons you may be doing it for, or not selfish reasons, it's, it's a very uh, commendable position to put yourself in. And that's, that's, all, that's really all I want to say. What was up? What was the flash point for you guys when you realized that you were hitting those levels, both of you? Dude, for late night drinking, this is not the right topic. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you what it was like to work with Billy Connolly, okay? Yes. yes. Look, it, me and Rich take our job very seriously, and there's things we're very proud of, and, and but you know, it's like, one of my favorite quotes is, an actor can no more discuss his art than a plant can discuss horticulture. And it's That's really true. true. So everybody true. has their own different process. And make no mistake, whether you're thinking about something that happened in your own life, you're accessing a real emotion. And if you believe it enough, your body will take over and react accordingly. Yeah. And we're happy to as fuck that you guys even like it. Yeah, exactly. Right. We're flattered. We're flattered. Yeah. So check it out. Billy Connolly, every one of his stories starts off with some shit like this. So it was 1969, and Mick Jagger was in the corner of the room, and David Bowie was sitting there, and they were carrying on, right? And then I looked up and I realized that he was stroking his cock. <laughs> and uh, then, you know, he reached down and he started pulling my leg, much like I'm pulling yours. Billy Connolly's fucking hysterical, man. And the cat's, the cat's just. The, some, of the, some of the funniest shit happened on the ride to the set because the motherfucker just carries on. He'll tell you a story about some shit that happened in the fucking hotel bar the night before that's like, God damn, did you just fucking write that? It really fucking happened to this guy. <laughs> Talking about like fucking two chicks and a starfish? That's fucking Billy Connolly. <laughs> There's a slice of Benvita and she took her panties off. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Go back up to the fucking cheese in the back. What the fuck? And he's got some explanation that can pulls it all together. You're like, God. Fish to the Led Zeppelin incident. Is he? No, but <laughs> that's a good story. But it was something like Bill. Tell the soap story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I dropped the soap in the shower. On <laughs> Not on purpose. I, I've been catching shit for it. <laughs> Sean, you're a martial artist. When's the martial arts film gonna happen, dude? Really? Yeah. Bring it, man. You know, most martial arts films are crap, you know? Oh, uh, you don't know Gareth Jones who just made the fucking raid. No turning back three. So anyway, most martial arts films are crap. They throw out like one, an individual here. But you know, at the end of the day, it's like, I've been doing it longer than I've been acting. And uh, you know, there's a certain, there's a certain stigma that you get when you're a martial artist and then you become an actor. So I bless the fact that nobody fucking knew. Because then they take me seriously as an actor. Then they find out, oh fuck, the guy's been doing it for that long. Holy shit. But if I was a martial arts guy and everybody knew it, I'd be cast in these 
fight films with no real substance. And, you know, I'd be, I'd be typecast as something else. So I'm not angry at the fact that nobody knows. I, I don't need to wear it on my sleeve. I'm, is you know, is Bar Mark something you want to keep kind of for yourself? You know what I mean? Like just something that other people can't have a hand on? Well, it, you know, I mean, I mean, it's not something I'm so possessive with. I don't want anybody to know about it. I'm not secret about it, but I don't wear it on my sleeve and go and pronounce like, by the way, guys, I can fucking choke you unconscious. You know, it's just like, <laughs> I mean, I mean, the, 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 the greatest thing about martial arts is when you train martial arts, I think it's very important for people to know, hey, for kids to know, like, I can get punched in the face and well, I'm not going to die. Wow, okay, first of all, and it's also very important to know how easy it is for a motherfucker to wreck you if he knows how. Until you know that, you're walking into bars, you're like, what, what? As soon as you start training, you're like, I don't know what that 135 pound guy knows. <coughs> because if or he's girl. training, or, or, okay, well, yeah. okay, I'll be honest with you, in striking arts, in, in most striking arts, it really doesn't matter what a 135 pound woman knows, if the guy is 250, you're probably not going to render him unconscious with a strike. But well, grappling. But grappling is different. Grappling is very different. If a chick knows grappling and a 250 pound guy doesn't, doesn't know it, the guy's going to sleep. Yeah. But at the end of the day, that's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. I mean, you can sort of like, well, I would do a fucking fatal strike to the fucking pink. It's like, shit doesn't happen. That's <laughs> the one. Yeah, like, it, doesn't, it just doesn't look happen. It's like, you know, for, first of all, first of all, it's like, it's very important to know how easy you can get disassembled. It changes the way you talk to everybody. It just makes you value everything. You go in, you know, stuff, you should treat everybody as if they're 300 and fucking <laughs> trained to the hilt. And it teaches you that. Suddenly you're talking to some skinny little fucker and you're giving him the respect that, he, that, do, that, that he's due. Only because you've been on the mat. And I'll tell you, this is how I got into Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I was teaching a karate class. And Hicks and, Hicks and Gracie, my first instructor, came in and he put mats down. And he had closed his Pico Academy, and he was opening up the Barrington Academy. And he put mats down, and I looked at the gi, and it said R I C K S O N Gracie. And I was so stupid. In, in Portuguese, you don't pronounce the R; it's an H, right? So his name is Hickson. But I was so stupid. I'm like, Rickson and Gracie. Gracie. Oh, is that is it? Is that like Hoist Gracie? He's like, Yeah, you know, that's my brother. I was like, Ah, no brother. shit. I didn't, even, yeah, I didn't even know that Hickson was like the stud of the family. Yeah. For example, the reason they put Hoist in is because he looks skinny and frail. They thought, fuck, if this skinny and frail dude can win, that will really sell our martial art. Well, Hickson could toy with Hoist. Hickson was a stud. So they came in there and they put masks down. I was like, oh, dude, I've, all, I've watched UFC 1 and I've always wanted to train. He's like, man, you know, put the gear, you're going to train, you're going to love, man. I was like, ah, I've never, I've never studied grappling in my life. He's like, man, you put the gear, you're going to like this man. And so I put his borrowed gi on. And Matt Higgins, who's still a very dear friend of mine today, I was 170 pounds, competing on the national level, doing triathlons at the time. I was an athlete. And I, and I was very, very skilled at a multitude of martial arts. Been doing it since I was nine. And Matt Higgins, 135 pounds, could have urinated on me. <laughs> I mean, it went like this. Ch choked out, arm locked, ankle locked, knee barred, everything. There's two types of people in the world. There's the person that's like, well, in a street confrontation, I would groin shot, I would eye gouge. And then there's the person that's like, no, I got comprehensively ripped. I need to fucking learn that shit. <laughs> and I was in the latter. I was in the latter. You know, and it comes from a place of education. I, I don't say this because it's the only martial art that I, I know, and I'm like, it has to be the best. No, I'm training fucking all. And that's the one that fucking wrecked me. Comprehensively wrecked me. And, I, and that's, that's the kind of person that you have to be in martial arts. You have to be willing to accept the fact that, well, I'm going to get the shit kicked out of me, but it's going to teach me something. Yes, sir? Do you respect the, the Japanese jiu-jitsu? Absolutely. I respect every single martial art, but I'm a realist. No, I'm a realist. Yeah, yeah, totally. I'm a realist. I, I mean, but I respect all of them. There's, there's something to be gained from Grandpa Tai Chi. There's something to be gained from every single martial art. But I'm certainly not going to go, okay, this guy, you know, George Dillman thinks he can knock you out from 10 feet away with his mind, right. uh, ain't going to happen, buddy. Ain't going to happen. You know, that, there's some bullshit out there. There's a lot of McDojos, but the real stuff, absolutely. Japanese Jiu-Jitsu is fucking legit. 